there, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and today I have another Elmwood League update for you. Elmwood League, as you might recall, is the league in which I have a team. It is a competitive league. Uh, we send our CMs actually to the cloud every week, and then the uh, commissioner pulls the CMs down from the cloud and plays the games one week at a time. And we're going to take a look at where my Providence Grays are at the moment. So here is the league, and we will look at league stats. And as you can see, I am currently second in my division, tied for second, at 37 and 32. Now, just as a reminder, the top two divisions are in one sub-league. And I don't know why I did that in quotes, because it is a sub-league. <laughs> and then these, the bottom two divisions, are in another sub-league. And the way that the playoffs work is the winner of each division automatically makes the playoffs, obviously. And then it's the next two teams with the next two best records overall. So, if the playoffs were today, I would have a one game probably a, a one game playoff with uh, the Desert Dogs because we are tied at 37 and 32 and that record is better than the Bobtown team which is 34 and 32 so uh, we're like roughly two two or three games ahead of Bobtown for that um, for a tie for that fourth playoff spot because the third playoff spot right now would go to Keikianga. So uh, I, I guess we're not doing too badly. Here's the problem. Last week I was 31 and 31. So this past week I went six and one and I went six and one in part because I promoted Sebi Zavala to catcher and uh, Manessis at first base. And if we take a look at my team stats, you can see why that would have helped. <laughs> Manessis is hitting 390 with five home runs in 20 and 20 RBIs uh, in 82 at bats. Um, and he has eight doubles too. Now Zavala is not, he's not hitting great. He's hitting 218 with only five doubles and a home run in 55 at bats. But um, I was playing Molina there because Molina has a negative three arm. He's a catcher two with a negative three arm. So I was playing him for his defense, but you can see he's hitting 103. So Zavala was an upgrade. So um, I, I broke those guys out this past week and they helped me uh, win. But if we look at this past week, go to the daily log, and we look at what I did last week, I won four to one, so good pitching. I lost six to four in 11 innings, so not good pitching. I won seven to four, decent pitching. I won eight three, good pitching. I won seven to three, good pitching. I won three to one good pitching and here I won 13 to 3 I don't know if that was last week or this week but I won 13 to 3 again good pitching now there were times here of course I scored 7 I scored 8 I scored 7 so yeah the run production was good and Manessis and Zavala can probably partly be credited with that um, w with the good offense there but really what happened was I pitched well I mean you look at a game like this where these these uh, games right here where I allowed three and allowed three and allowed one, I wouldn't have needed many runs. I wouldn't have needed, um, well, I mean, winning three to one, that was, I got just about what I needed. But um, like winning seven to three, I could have won five to three. I could have won four to three. Um, uh, the game, this game where I gave up three runs, I could have won five three or four three. So I didn't really necessarily need the offense I was getting. It was just that my pitching was pitching well. And if we look at the um, 
league stats and we go to um, first grand totals. Now you can see hitting wise for batting average, I'm in the bottom of the league. I'm in the bottom half of the league hitting 241 with uh, 71 home runs. There's nothing special about that. It's not good. But in pitching, I have a 358 earned run, team earned run average, and that's in I'm in the top five in the league in pitching. So it really comes down to the pitching. Now, um, but yeah, before, prior to this past week, I wasn't very good. I was right around 500, maybe a little less than 500. Uh, there was weeks where I went three and four. In fact, that was my typical week. I was going three and four like the last two, uh, the last the two weeks prior to this past week. But as you just saw, I was six and one last week. So hopefully, Manessis and Zavala and um, and also a key here is that this past week when I went six and one, I was without Harper. Harper is on the injured list, but he'll be coming back soon. I'm going to sit him this this next week because I think he's still injured for like three more games and that I only play seven so rather than have Hal mess the whole lineup up um, or put Harper in and um, have a guy be the backup for him for three games or whatever and plus he's he's injured a lot I mean he has a high injury rating and I don't play the greatest teams this coming week so I'm just going to sit him out and then next week I'll bring him. I'll bring him up. But the point that I was trying to make is I went six and one without Harper. So that that probably um, is that's a, that's a good sign. Um, so again, if we go back to my uh, my team stats, you can see we'll go back and take a look at how I'm I'm doing here. Um, you can see Manessis hitting 390, 82 at bats, and he's hitting 390. I mean, the guy is incredible, but I only have just so many at bats from him. I mean, I he's got 82 already, and I only have like 220. He only has like 222 available at bats for me. So um, it's you know it's not going to go well. Um, so I have to build up a big league, a big lead, basically. Um, or hope to build up a big lead while he can still play. Um, El Tuve has come on strong. I got to say that. Um, early in the year, he was injured for me for a few games. And when he went on the injured list, he was only hitting like 170, something like that. So he has been a, he's been a house on fire, which is good because I need it. Um, and then there's Harper, and he's injured, as I mentioned. And Urias is hitting 278 for me. Um, Jimenez at 277. Now, Jimenez is a real big story because, like Harper, he has a high injury. His injury is in a very prominent place because he missed a lot of uh, the 2022 season. Uh, but he, you can see he's played 69 of 69 games for me. So, I, I don't know what's going on. He's, he is, he's bucking the trend and uh, staying in there, which is great because I need it, especially in the absence of Harper. But he's got 14 home runs and 41 RBIs and 256 at-bats. Uh, Andrus has been a nice, uh, he's been a nice surprise. He's hitting um, very well for me. In fact, if we take a look at Andrus... Um, you can see down here in the bottom here, he's hitting 274, but he had a 249 card. He's got a 327 on base for me, but he had a 303 on base card. So he's been a surprise and a, a pleasant surprise, and we and we and again we've needed it, um, because as you can see, I'm tied for second in my division. So let's go back to team stats. You know, and then there's <coughs> these helpful things here. I'm I'm seven. I'm only 17 and 17 at home, but I'm 20 and 15 on the road. So we want some more road games. <laughs> um, against lefties, I'm 14 and four, but everybody's better against lefties than they are against righties. Um, I'm 23 and 28 though against righties. 
Got to fix that. Got to up that. 9-11 and 11 in one-run games. I guess that's not terrible. 7-3 and three in my last 10, which is good. And 5-7 uh, and seven in extra innings. You'd like that to be a little better, but um, it's not terrible. So, yeah, we'll go back. But you can see down here in the pitching. <coughs> Excuse me. Got uh, Jason Adam, man. He is doing great. Almost 30 innings in the books, and he's got a 130 earned run average. Now, Strezelecki is, he's doing well too, but he's another limited guy. I only have like 20 more innings with him. Verlander, of course, was a great pickup. But we knew that was going to happen. He's six and four with a 2.34 earned run average. Brian Baker is two and one with a 2.35 earned run average. Cueto, in fact, if you look at my starting pitchers, the only one I have, um, the only full, basically full time, full time starter I have, that has worse than a three earned run average is uh, Tyler Anderson. For some reason, because Tyler Anderson this year, he had a great card. But, you know, I mean, let's look at the card. It's, it's really crazy. Because I know, I know that he's a lefty. And I know that in a limited league, lefties tend to get tortured. I know that. But he's a great lefty. Usually that doesn't affect great lefties. But, I mean, you look at this card. You just, really, he should be doing better than he's doing. So, that's where we are. Um, I'll let you take one more look. Let's see, league stats. We'll take one more look at the standings. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like where we are right now, but again, we're only really there because I was able to play Manessis for part of these, you know, parts of these games. I was hoping to keep Manessis under wraps. He can basically play 50 games. He can play 50 games of the season for me. I was hoping to keep him under wraps until, at worst, the last 50 games of the year and then break him out and then play him. But it was becoming apparent to me, you know, that where I had slipped to 31 and 31, it was becoming apparent that I wasn't going to make it to that point and still be in contention if I didn't break him out before that. So I did break him out last week. He's going to be up, um, and we'll see how all of that pans out for me. So I hope you like that uh, recap, and that is going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.